how to progress in Werner Rose and which one is the best way to go about it. Stay tuned! Yo, what's the crack? Your personal trainer T talks, changing people's lives for the better through strength and fitness. Today's video is all about inverted rows, body weight rows, Australian pull ups, or whatever you want to call them. This is an exercise I pretty much do all year round in my training. And when possible, this is also a movement I usually prescribe to my clients. Its unique characteristics, easy setup, and straightforward technique make the bodyweight row a great exercise for the development of the upper and middle back, especially if you don't have access to heavy weights. In the past, I discussed the benefits of doing inverted rows and how they relate to the pull-up. I did it in this video up here. You may want to catch it later on if you are interested. In any case, the bodyweight row could become the bread and butter in your training when it comes to overloading a horizontal pull. And yes, there are many other inverted row variations you can use to progress a horizontal pulling, but in today's video I'm going to solely focus on the purest progression to its original form. Think about a machine in the gym. When you want to increase the intensity in a movement, you only have to place the stick in a lower hole in the stack of weights. Adjusting the height of the bar or the rings is the equivalent of jacking up the intensity. The lower you grab the implement, the higher the percentage of your body weight you'll have to pull. Therefore, the harder the exercise gets. If you always train in vertical rows in the same location or using the same gym rack, I would advise for you to take notes on the height of the rings or bar that you're using to complete this exercise to ensure that you make progressions on this movement based on consistent standards. Mine is to first find out the exact height at which the bottom of the rings hangs. Then I proceed to get myself beneath the rings to where my arms are perpendicular to the ground while my knees draw a 90 degree angle. Once I get myself into this position, then I fully extend up the knees to assume the plank needed to perform inverted rows. Not having a repeatable and standardized setup is a mistake I made when I first started training calisthenics outdoors. You don't want to be doing the same exercise at random intensities every time you train. By being mindful of height, you leave no room for guesstimating your training. You want to make sure that inverted rows become a movement that you can progress objectively. If you were to do inverted rows in a rack or power rack at your gym, the only piece of information relevant to the intensity in the exercise is the number written next to the hole where you place the bar. Very simple. Can you progress in vertical rows through variations of this exercise? Sure, there are many variables you can adjust to increase the difficulty of the movement. In fact, I showed you multiple examples on how to accomplish this in these two videos you see on the screen. However, I feel like some variations deviate too much from the original movement and now aspects other than strength can become the limiting factor during a set. When you can no longer lower the rings or the bar further down because there is no space for you to do rows with full range of motion, the easiest way to progress the exercise is through the following methods. By elevating your feet, you are going to increase the percentage of your body weight that will act as resistance. And look, there is no ideal height to aim for. How high your feet are will mainly depend on the object or surface you use to accomplish this progression. But something that wouldn't make much sense at all is to raise the rings or the bar as you use an elevated surface for your feet. That would defeat the purpose of this progression. So make sure that you maintain the same height while your feet are now somewhat above the ground. If you don't have a chance to use a box, a bench, a chair or something similar, you could always go the most traditional route and add weight to the movement. Well, the goal of doing this is pretty self-explanatory. You're making inverted rows harder because you have to overcome a higher resistance. You can use a rucksack with weights in it, a weighted vest, or simply place a plate on your chest. Whatever method is more comfortable or available to you. The natural next step would be to put together these two progression methods. When you elevate your feet and add resistance to the movement, now we're talking real money. However, there's a catch here. As you become really strong at inverted rows, you will eventually be confronted with a quandary, which is that the overloading potential is limited. In other words, there is a limited amount of weight you are going to be able to use eventually because the exercise becomes too unpractical. But let me make this very clear. 
The vast majority of people trained in Frederick Row will never in their entire lives get to this point, so rest assured. I know that this progression might seem unreal for beginner lifters right now, but hear me out. If you consistently apply progressive overload on inverted rows for several months or even years, this is what getting stronger in this movement looks like in real life. It can be done, but it'll take some time. Strength gains is one of those adaptations that can be fast-tracked, just be patient and consistent. Take a look at one of my clients. At the age of 49, he looked so fragile and uncomfortable doing inverted rows at an easy angle for the first time. Two years later, that is 24 months later, he can now do multiple repetitions with his feet elevated while maintaining a good body posture and explosiveness. Let's see where he's at in a year from now. Let's face it, when it comes to strength gains and muscle growth, thinking in years is probably the most realistic time frame for most people training recreationally. Anyway, something that I would recommend is to use percentage increases when you find yourself at the point where you are using both feet elevation and adding external resistance to inverted rows. Start working with a load that is equal to 5% of your body weight. If this isn't enough for you to be challenging this movement, then bump it up to 10% and see how that feels. Next jump will be 15% and so on and so forth. If you're strong enough to complete 10 full range of motion, pause at the bottom, control repetitions with around 50% of your body weight as external resistance, then my hat off to you. You've won, congratulations, your back must look freaking insane. The last thing I would like to point out about the inverted row is the great strength carryover they have to pull-ups. Generally speaking, the more pull-ups you can do, the stronger you're going to be at inverted rows and vice versa. There are certain exercises that tend to work very well in tandem. I'm talking about movements where the muscle overlap is so great that they reinforce each other. Pull-ups and inverted rows are a good example of this symbiotic relationship. The reason why I felt compelled to bring this up is because the inverted row could temporarily replace the pull-up in your training if you have a shoulder injury that causes you pain when you get into an overhead position like during pull-ups. You can still keep making impressive back gains by getting stronger at inverted rows because the strength transfer between the two movements is very high. If you want to find out more on this topic, I recommend watching this video where I highlight the example of Sven from calisthenic movement. In sum, don't overcomplicate things when it comes to progressing inverted rows and keep going at them until you get insanely strong. Elevating your feet and adding external weight are the simplest options to consider, and combining them is just the natural thing to do after a while. Moreover, there is an added bonus of strength carryover between movements. A stronger inverted row will most likely translate into a stronger pull-up and vice versa, which means that they could replace each other for some time if one of them causes you pain. Check out these two videos, I think you're gonna like them. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified every time a new video goes live. Stay fit, stay strong, peace.